Hello everyone and welcome to RP2000 testing in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. RP2000 is meant to be as similar as possible to the stock career before real solar system and realism overhaul, starting in the year 2000, putting you in the position of a modern space startup company. Because of life support issues I had in 1.10 and 1.11, I decided to keep it to 1.8.1. In terms of part mods, RP2000 will only require my small rockets and shear strut engine pack, but will be compatible with other part mods. I may make an additional part pack for later parts of the tech tree. This video covers a live stream where I test RP2000 with Kerbal Construction Time, which is optional for the first time. The Kerbal Construction Time configuration and many of the contracts are from the KSP 1.1.3 version of RP0. I do expect that I will be releasing a very, very alpha version of RP2000 soon, so uh, hopefully this video will give you an idea how the game flow goes with this career mod. Anyway, here is the original audio from the live stream. And I'll just uh, go for hard mode and have indestructible facilities, plasma blackout requires signal for control, always allow action groups. And we'll have other limits there, that's fine too, and Kerbals will level up immediately. So I've got Permit All Connectivity. And choose the preset. So I just basically copied the RP0 preset. And so we have this RP2000 preset. And I'm gonna spend per normal with Kerbal construction time. So we'll have, we'll see if it works, I have no idea. Okay, so we've got 11 science per year. All right, we only have 10,000 funds. I sort of fixed the, I mean, RP0 had fixed this in the same way, the first flight contract. That had been fixed by RP0 by just getting rid of it, so I also just got rid of it. And now we have a first flight contract in our own contract group. The question is, after we get to the first satellite, will it give the other contracts, right? I want to make sure that it gives all the other contracts. So we'll try and get to space and um, RP0 they actually said to the Carmen line I didn't. I decided to just make the contract be to space. So now we have a little bit of an advance but not a whole lot. And so we have the Kerbal Construction Time thing there. Sounding Rocket Core. For normal that increased the build time. That's what it's supposed to do. All right. So we can put experiments here and I want to see, I tried to make sure that it would actually, and now I've got this tag that says part placed in price by RP2000 for any part that I've done. I created this whip antenna for communications so that we'll have an easier time. So we'll have two whip antennas here. For the small ones. They don't have much range, it should be just 400 kilometers, so. I don't know if that's enough of a boost. I think that's more decisive. Maybe I just want a cylinder. We're adding another one of these solid rock motors. These, oh, I forgot to tag those, shoot. Tagging is work in progress, these should be tagged as well. We're just going to space this time. I'm not trying to get a Juno, but Junos might happen. I think this is enough to Delta V to go to space. But probably not enough stability. Yeah, I mean, especially since it'll have us accelerating too fast in the lower atmosphere. Let's just go with the eBay engine. I don't want to mess around. And we have to remember service module is a high pressure engine. It is overkill for this. But it's still only 77, technically $77,000, 77 funds. Now I haven't made the special launch clamp for these small rockets, so. We're just gonna have to go with the regular launch clamp. Standard spin stabilization.
since it's the EB engine, I'm just gonna call it, well, it's, I don't know. I don't know about calling it the eBay rocket. It'll just do the usual thing and call it alpha. Okay, uh, it said that it, okay, like now it's building. So it's just a version issue. All right, we are in business. Okay, what's our rollout cost? Okay, I think we don't have a roll up rollout cost. Maybe not. Okay, that's probably for the best. I don't want that complexity. Okay, right. So throttle up. SA no, no, throttle up all. No operational SAS modules. Fine, but can you throttle up? I mean, what the heck? Okay, fine. SAS we don't need. Ignition. And launch. So, we got vessel complete, and we did complete first flight, so that problem is now functionally solved. We just need a sim payload to space. To be honest, just this stage should handle that. Okay, so we got that. We did space. Um, I actually want to see whether the comms dies on us if we get too high, so we'll just boost up. Uh, it is a little bit hard to get at the thermometer like this when it's spinning. Ah, there we go. Now let's log temperature transmit. Doesn't take a lot of power to transmit, apparently. It's not like the stock situation. Okay, so we got some data, we did get some science, and boost up further. Now there's two 400 kilometer antennas, and then there's the multiplier from being close to a basically a deep space network thingamajig. So it's tough to tell. In space near Earth is pretty... Now, let's try and get a, a upper atmosphere one, since we're here. Just lost communication because of plasma, but it managed to get the science out somehow. Oh, good. <laughs> all right. That's all disposed of. Reconditioning launch pad. We remember that. Oh, we got tourism things. Oh my god, there's a lot of tourism things. We don't even have a cabin. They need to test for that. Now we're rolling in dough, but again, the building upgrades are pretty hefty. Oh, we've got some science. Let's unlock the next, uh, the basic rocketry thing. That'll take time, incredible construction time, and we'll test that it takes time. Okay, but that's all the science we got. We couldn't do anything more. Oh, right, it takes some time. Shoot, I forgot about that. I need time warp. I was looking. Where's my engines? I guess we should have put some p points into upgrades. We have one available. Let's speed up science. And spend some. And speed up science more. Uh, something wrong has happened. Oh, now that we've unlocked basic rocketry, it has limited the procedural parts to a length of one. So that needs to change. <laughs> um, suddenly basic rocketry limits the tank size. Fix procedural part limits. Okay, but uh, we don't have to worry about that right now, perhaps. We've got other tanks. I think this... It'll cost more to unlock the integral structure tank, but I think it won't even obey the limits, maybe. I mean, pretty sure. Because the limits were before these tanks were introduced and are only part of procedural parts. It is locked by a tech. That was the problem. We unlocked a tech, and then suddenly that tech reduced our capabilities. 
And that was because procedural parts originally wasn't unlocked until basic rocketry. But I shifted it to be unlocked at start. This one, yeah, is unlimited and this one is... We would have to stack a whole bunch of these. All right. Let's say we use one of these for our mock payload. We'll try and be an electron rocket. 200 kilograms or so. That's going to be pressure fed. Well, we can put RCS as well. And they'll use the same repellent. So, make sure it is pressure fed. Our first... Oh, but these are mop propellant RCS ports. Let's skip that for this time. Until we get bi propellant ones. Well, maybe we will go with the Reaver. Could be worse. Seems to have more capability than we were planning for. Okay, we'll keep it simple. We're just trying to get to orbit. And... Maybe we'll make a proper satellite out of this. I mean, come on. These other ones are actually probably a little bit better. We don't even need the Wisp antennas if we use a Vanguard. We could probably put it in a pretty high orbit too. But can we sort of toss on a relay, small relay antenna on it too? Mm. Let's have an accelerometer. And share a barometer. Okay, will that work? A lot of comms. 43 days to build it. We'll call it Bravo. <laughs> okay, it should be in the build list. And launch. So, what did I get wrong? <laughs> Let's find out. Very basic. I don't know why it... Okay, there we go. Now, we, now we've got... Oh, we've even got SAS. Vanguard 3 is awesome. <laughs> Alright. Ignition. Uh, that's just when it's on the ground, the plume is messed up. Well, the plume is probably not great, but... We do not have Katniss Cape Canaveral, so... Now Cape Canaveral is looking a little bit lonelier over here. Hmm. But yeah, I deleted the uh, Katniss Cape Canaveral for simplicity's sake. But maybe I need to replace the height map, because otherwise it looks like an island. And fairings. Well, we're in the atmosphere, but maybe we can get some science. Gravity scan we can't do, but the pressure scan we can. Then more science. Oh, that really and uh oh. I did not expect it to use the re why did it use the relay antenna? Now we're out of power, but then I guess it wasn't... As long as it gets into orbit, it's fine, right? It's just gonna go on its own now. Or does Smart ASS not obey the power restrictions? Yeah, I think Smart ASS is... I don't know how to stop it from doing that. <laughs> but it's just fizz warp. Well, it would still have gotten into orbit with all this Delta V, so... It doesn't really matter much. I'll let it run out since, in theory, I shouldn't be able to shut it down. Okay. That should qualify, right? Yep. First satellite done. Alright. To Space Center? I need some very different contracts. I don't want a hundred tourist contracts. Maybe I should turn off the tourist contracts. But then, it seems like 
a lot of people nowadays are running off of tourist contracts, so... <laughs> Tough thing to say, but then we don't even have a pod. It should really figure out whether we have a pod first. Okay, we've got two. We got 19 tourism contracts for a high G adventure, um, but we've got two. Oh, it says keel synchronous. I thought I'd fix that. Let me see. See, there's this section on the stock contracts configuration that I have that deliberately renames all the stuff to. Well, other things, not geostationary, for instance. So, it should be geostationary. But it didn't do that, so. Hmm. But that is. That is not. That is not geostation. That's the right altitude for geostationary. But that's not the right inclination for geostationary. 119.7? Why? Hmm. Geo synchronous. Well, it's synchronous, but that's not still not right. Okay, but let's see. That one's 137.8 degrees. I'll take the more polarish one. It seems seems easier. <laughs> Hmm. What if what if we made a satellite that could go from one to the other? But that's a lot of delta v. I mean, this is already already a very high orbit. They already want such high orbits out of us. But it shouldn't be too hard to change. But what's the longitude of ascending node? Eh, but it's circular though. We are going to attempt to do both contracts simultaneously with the sing with a single launch. I think we should just get Engineering 101. So there'll be some research time. So, instead of Vanguard... Did it have any special requirements? Can generate power. Well, then we're gonna have to be gonna have to do the CubeSat ones with the solar panels, otherwise we don't have any solar panels. I guess we should put some science on, because it'll be high Earth orbit there. Uh oh, that's too high. Oh come on, I want one of the lower nodes. CubeSat components are so hard to click on. Just fill all the other levels with batteries. Still four kilograms. Now, what what about a really tiny, tiny engine? How small can we make these little things? Uh, no, I don't care about that. Fine. It's not even obeying that. Maybe I should have put a reaction wheel in. Those are ex well, they're not that expensive. They're like eight thousand bucks. Is in this situation not very expensive. Mind you, that's got 0 0.02 torque. RCS is probably not necessary, but... That's a magnet torque. This is a star tracker. That... Oops. That adds SAS, so... Maybe we should have that. Full featured CubeSat. So I added uh, Erosine and UDMH configuration. These are the same numbers, I didn't bother with that, but we'll probably stick to MMH and Mon3. Uh, but these, this has to use Hydrazine. Uh, hmm. We'll need separate Hydrazine. Well, I mean, maybe we can just rely on the reaction wheel, though. Maybe, maybe we'll try and rely on the reaction wheel. Vastly underpriced? Well, that's $126,000, this thing. So, I mean, the, the, the pricing is all based on just adding three zeros. So, effectively, our budget is $179 million right now. Uh, let's see, what, what are they? I mean, it looks like they're basically less than a thousand though, so I don't know, but I didn't price the fuel. That's priced in real fuels, as far as I know. And I don't care, I want all the... 
all the delta V I can get. Maybe we should have multiple of those, or... Problem is, other things will have limited ignitions. Hydrazine. Ironically, we'll put a larger, less efficient engine down here, but we'll have RCS. Now that we have hydrazine, though, we can use a mod propellant thruster. Okay. That staging is all over the place. So the top is just relying on the little reaction wheel inside the cube set, which may or may not be a good idea. I think the hydrazine stage and the CubeSat stage are a little bit too much for this launcher though, given the delta V's there. Uh, no, let's just make it shorter. Okay. Bravo 2. But I wonder what happened to the low orbit contracts. <laughs> Suddenly it's giving us a high orbit contract. I shouldn't have let my first satellite get to such a high orbit, huh? Maybe. We have no control. Okay. Uh, Alright. Um, uh, which one should I use? The recover vessel or the roll back? Recover active vessel, I think, that way. Hold on a sec. I guess we need the wisp and whip antennas as well. We really only need the whip antennas for launch, though. Okay, seems good to me. Okay, well, now we have comms. Uh, we have to pay attention to which orbit we're going into. So eventually we're gonna have to like <laughs> tilt the orbit up there. That's gonna be fun. But let's see. Um, I don't want to get in either of these orbits, but uh, let's go for the green one first. There's no tooling. I'm not putting tooling in. Uh, because I want to keep it simple for people transitioning from stock. This isn't full RP1 or anything. There's no tooling. This is meant to be simple. There's endless cheaty things in realism overall as well. But, you know, you can pick and choose which one is the cheaty thing you're gonna get riled up about, but it's just endless things that you could call cheaty, but the point is to be able to play a game. Ignition. And launch. I do like when they get to this part of their plumage. Remember folks, you're not allowed to go this way. <laughs> Speaking of cheaty things. I might have uh, wanted to go the subtract in the opposite direction. Well, we can definitely dump the fairings. We'll need some of this stage to finish up orbit too. Well, we're in space. We can extend things. Can we get to two degrees? Two degrees. But right here, one. One degree, I think that's about as good as we're going to get. Our apoapsis is going real high though. But that's sort of alright in this case. And... next stage. That is a huge hydrazine plume. <laughs> Will we have comms at periapsis here? Yeah, looks like Kuru. Wow, that reaction wheel is actually pretty good. I don't even think we needed the RCS ports. 
Okay, staging. Oh. Ah, KSP crashed. No, why did you crash? <laughs> Darn, st I've had this problem with the coupler sometimes. Great.